Hello and welcome to this video today in English because it's a Kerbal Space program and Kerbal Space program the, co the whole community is basically English so yeah I'm doing an English commentary now and not in German as usually I do so what are we doing today in this mission we are going to or not now but the target of the mission is to go to Leith the moon around Joule and today we are building the ship that goes to late with space shuttles because space shuttles are really cool so here you can see the first part of the mission it's not actually a space shuttle it's uh, just an SSTO it will be the lander that lands on late it's a VTOL on Kerbin at least I have to address on Kerbin, on Kerbin it's an SSTO but on late it's an how to call it an S tall short takeoff and landing vehicle because the atmosphere is uh, thinner on lathe it, it means that there's not enough air to produce enough thrust to get vertically from the surface but it's still a huge benefit um, being able to land in a short distance so I built it that way so it can also be used as a curb in SSDO but you can see that it almost doesn't have enough uh, fuel to get to curb in orbit it wouldn't be able to come back so this thing has to be refueled so that's what we are going to do on the next launch but in a second we yeah now we are in orbit around curb in. And we have successful lift off of our first space shuttle launch in this video, one of four launches. We have a lot to do in this video, so I will go fast through the launches. This one I will be taking a bit more time because it's the first one, but the other ones we, are, we will just uh, fast through them because the interesting stuff, the whole building the spaceship will be happening in LKO. So. Here we have booster separation, almost. Now we have booster separation. Not the best, I know, they almost collided, but we made it. And now the most difficult part of flying the space shuttle, or the second most difficult part, comes along. It, it's riding this tank. So the payload of this mission here is the refueling tank. It's in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. We will be refueling our late lander because it's like we saw before it's completely drained of fuel and it needs fuel to go to late and land there and at the same docking port that this fuel tank will refuel at the whole transfer stage for going to late will also be attached because uh, the docking port is exactly at the center of gravity if fueled which also means that we can't take it back, but we're coming in way too fast from late, so that's not an issue, right? So here we are, slowing down and docking to the vehicle, or not docking, we're just uh, approaching the vehicle with the shuttle, which is a bit of a task because you can see those uh, monopropellant engines from the ohms system from the orbital maneuvering system is uh, like it's up it sits up the space shuttle and it has an angle to it so if it just burn straight to something from space shuttle cockpit perspective we will actually um, land under it so i did the fine adjustments just using the rcs blocks actually the funny thing is just using the RCS blocks gives you, gives you more thrust than actually using this OMS uh, engine system there. But I just wanted to be true to the actual space shuttle, so I did it this way. So here the tank is docked, we can start refueling it and then head back. So 
Let's get this tank back to its parent, the space shuttle. It was a, also a bit of a task, like steering this tank. Also the space shuttle drifted like 600 meters away. So yeah. But we will be able to make it. And landing the space shuttle will be the next challenge. A challenge where I won't succeed a lot of times in this video because it is so hard. Like landing the space shuttle is a very, very hard task. Because uh, I only realized the problem why at the end, and I will tell you at the end. But my problem was that first, like on the first launch, the center of gravity was wrong. So it flipped about. But then I was coming in and the, the center of gravity was okay. But it all always spun around. I don't know why. And after spinning around it, it flew perfectly again. So something weird. So here I knew nothing of those problems. You're just coming in the first time. Can we make it or not? I thought we can make it. But I had to do some uh, changes to the space shuttle afterwards. Because uh, it, it, it wasn't really that well you will see it. Landing this was a huge bummer. But I did a little montage. So uh, I don't have to talk over it. You can see it yourselves. How difficult it was landing it. So here comes the montage. have successful lift off of our second space shuttle mission in this video and this one will be a bit better you can see I learned how to fly it a bit more stable here the gravity turn isn't as late as with the second one uh, but with this one I will fast forward it a bit faster you already saw that it can fly so we have booster separation now we're just burning uh, prograde yeah prograde is it yeah, I should learn those uh, this vocabulary, <laughs> shouldn't I? So we can uh, burn prograde and after that our tank will be decoupled. You can see I still have issues uh, riding this tank. It's very difficult in Kerbal Space Program because you have to do everything with uh, WAST and shift and control. So it wasn't that easy. So here we have tank separation, a bit the spinny one. So, what is in this shuttle? It's the crew compartment, which in and of itself is kind of its own spacecraft, uh, because it has like monopropellant engines and tanks. So theoretically it could go somewhere, but uh, we have different, we have different craft to do that. We don't need this one. So now we can dock it towards or at we, we can talk it to our lathe SSTO lander and it this will be the first part you will see like you see why I needed four launches the the space in the shuttle's cargo bay is pretty limited so like this isn't much this is just a command module a hitchhiker storage module for the Kerbals to have a bit more space than they would have in just this capsule and the plane 
and a heat shield, some tanks, monopropellant tanks, and the docking port. And this already filled up the cargo bay almost entirely. So yeah, we have to work with uh, space limitations. You know, because space and space is endless. Nah, bad joke. So now, second re-entry. Let's try. Let's look if we are better this time. Spoiler a bit, <laughs> but not much. So here I thought everything is okay this time, like it was stable. Everything worked out how I wanted it to do. And we were just coming in over this ocean. I had to pay uh, attention to the distance. That's why I go to the map a lot of times to check the distance to the KSC. Uh, because like if, you, if you come in at this speed and you pitch up, you induce drag but also lift. And so you have to check that lift and drag is in the right ratio. Yeah, it wasn't going well here. Now I realize that this shuttle here is also pretty shit. And it spun around again. Little quick save. I'm glad I made this quick save. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it without it. But it just kept on spinning. And spinning the whole time. So here spinning again. I was just, fuck it. Let's just uh, fast forward until it spun. And then it flies perfectly, like, do you see this? Now it flies absolutely perfect, how I wanted it. Sadly, um, through the spin we lost a lot of speed, and so we aren't able to land at the runway, so we have to land in this little meadow here, or forest. At least uh, the trees don't have collision, because I turned it off in the Parallax 2.0 mod, which by the way is an amazing mod. Everyone that doesn't have the Parallax 2.0 should definitely get it, it's amazing. Like, just look at it. it, it just looks so more realistic. All those trees around and the grass, the, the plants, it's amazing. It, it really enhances KSP. So, we managed to land. It wasn't the smoothest landing because we were landing in a meadow. <laughs> in real life, everything would touch. So, we can get to the next part of this mission. Successful liftoff of the third space shuttle launch in this video. Isn't it exciting? So, this will be a paradise for the people that love space shuttles. I hope I can do those markings, you know, in the, in the video length, I can do a marking. But yeah, so you can just fast forward all shuttle launches. Here the boosters actually collided, because I was giving a bit too much thrust. Um, yeah, because the payload is very heavy on this one. But I uh, underest overestimated. Uh, the, the weight of the payload and I just throttled too much. So you can see I'm, I'm a bit uh, wrong, like my orbit is a bit too high here. I need to do a plane change and I need to do the plane change now because later we don't have enough fuel for it. Like my shuttle here uh, that I built, it has like yeah 300 meters a second, 400 meters a second once in orbit or like now it has 400 once in orbit 300 and depending on the payload even less so we ha really have to fly efficiently or somewhat efficiently i wasn't that efficient in this video but you have to try fly efficient so let's burn towards it let's burn the maneuver node and here we are you can see it's a pretty hefty fuel tank it's the liquid fuel fuel tank for the nuclear engines I will, I will attach to them. But uh, I need such a huge fuel tank to bring this 
huge payload you can see here up to lathe height but uh, at the end we end up with like 3700 3, meters a second of delta v which is enough to get to lathe uh, using some cheeky gravity assists which i'm not the best at but it will work like now i have a bit of training the first time i went to Joule, it was a val mission the first time i went to Joule, i actually uh, did the tool arrow break it was pretty pretty cool not that efficient but cool and ksp is everything about coolness isn't it so yeah we have not docked it together almost now we have docked it together so our spaceship is almost complete now um you can see I've packed a lot of struts uh, there in this crew compartment just because um, if you attach things via docking port then you want to accelerate this whole construction with uh, some engines it will just wobble around and the Kraken will attack you infinite amounts of time so using this technique I can strut it all together and will be stable I think this is still my favorite update like this orbital construction update is really good it allowed you to do so much things and if you forgot to add a solar panel for instance it's not that bad anymore it, it, as it was back in the days like back in the days you had to revert the whole flight or if you used quick saves already you had to land the whole flight and do it all again but now you can just fire up another rocket and attach a solar panel to it and I also brought an RTG with me, in case some unit lost power, we can just add an RTG and it will have power. Because last time I used this SSTO lander, I went to late, um, it was like the first flight of it. Uh, I noticed that I haven't had enough electricity after like 5 minutes to activate the hinge system for uh, vertical takeoff and landing which is pretty bad because i needed that so i had to go within those five minutes and normally i stay at the planet i land on or the moon like maybe four or five days or a week like in-game couple weeks so yeah th this was a bit weird so now upcoming will be the first successful landing of the whole space shuttle the first successful mission of the whole system yeah little quick save there because it wanted to flip around and you have to remember i did uh, re modifications to space shuttle after every flight so that it still was spinning around was pretty interesting to me but yeah let's watch this I will shut up to make it more dramatic. Not the best landing, but it is a landing. And I couldn't refuse to put the meme in there. Why not after all, why not? It's a Kerbal Space Program video and not something serious, so yeah. We landed it, I was like in front of the PC and was like, finally I did it, finally. So, next part of the mission. So, we have successful liftoff of the fourth space shuttle mission in this whole mission. And it will be the last one, so enjoy it, as long as it lasts. So upcoming is booster separation. Here, somewhere. Yeah, now, booster separation, now riding the tank. You know it by now. At this point I knew it too. And everything was well and good on the way to orbit. This uh, flight I managed to do first try, the other one sometimes I had to do a second time because something wasn't quite right, but here everything worked out the way 
it should. So this here is the engine stage. It has five nuclear engines attached to it and a little fuel tank so they can couple together and form the whole transfer stage. So tank separation and after a little burn you're in orbit. Here you can see the payload, how it looks. It has some reaction wheels on there of course for uh, making maneuvering a bit more easy. Here we are at the craft, separated and you have to know this here doesn't have any control. Like this engine stage has no probe core. So I have to dock the rest to it, which was almost impossible because my RCS fuel just ran out. Like just at the last second, I managed to dock it and then it ran out. So it was pretty tight on RCS fuel budget. And this nuclear stage engine stage doesn't have RCS, so I'm glad I could couple it together. And here you can see me use another cool feature, this hinge rotation system, because it looked a bit ugly, um, because it has like this angle offset. So now I wanted to strut it together and then I noticed, wait, the engine stage is too far down. So my plan was to just take the strut with the Kerbal, but pretty soon I realized that this wasn't an option. So I had to think about it a bit and then I thought I will just load the struts into the space shuttle and then like maneuver the space shuttle down and then I can take the struts out. And here you can see me do the whole docking part. It took an eternity. I will just let it speak for itself. So finally it worked, I could uh, place the strut in the space shuttle, but it took an eternity. Also I needed a quick load between because something was bugged, or I thought I was bugged, maybe it wasn't bugged. So finally, now I tried it again and I saw yeah, it really was too low, it wasn't just a bug. So we can fly the space shuttle under there, so the co that the cockpit is like somewhat level. And then we can start attaching those struts that everything will be stable. Here it is especially important, like the engine stage needs to be strutted well, or else it won't really work that well, it will just do the crack all the time. And what I forgot in this video is uh, to strut something else. And this is the connection between the command module and the plane, or the SSTO lander. It doesn't have a strut on right now, but it needs, because uh, it will also wobble about. But we will do this in the next video, because like this here is only orbital construction, of course, part two. Hopefully I will do it in a week, but uh, editing this whole thing was... Uh, yeah, it, it was a thing to do, definitely. It took some time, um, especially the music part. Like, you will notice that uh, the music is like fitting to the footage, I wanted to do that, so I hope it is well. I'm not the biggest king ever in cutting stuff together, I can do like five things in Premiere Pro. It's like editing sound, like that it gets slowly um, more loud and slowly less loud, and I can cut stuff together and do this uh, crossfade effect here, and else I can't really do much. So here we are. I thought everything would be fine this time, the fourth time. It has to be fine, but no. 
we run into a catastrophic issue. Yeah, I, and for all those who um, stayed with me until here through this not that well planned commentary, uh, you will get something cool here, a little end clip where I will be silent. So yeah, the music starts getting more intense and I will just shut up for now and you can see So I hope you liked this little finale. I just wanted to cut it in. It was cool, like all those alarm sounds, putting them in here. So now the video is almost concluded. The only thing left to do is to go to the transfer stage and put it into a higher orbit than it already is, like 90 kilometers. So now we are at the end screen. On the left you can see uh, my last KSP video where I went to Duna with a very weird setup but uh, it is a cool setup nonetheless and on the right side you can see something I don't know what it is right now so I wish you a nice start of the week maybe whenever this video gets published so I have to go now goodbye see you later <laughs>